Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting episode. Um, I have two goals today. Um, the first goal is to not get tomato sauce all over my white jacket. Um, tomato sauce and chocolate, they're like magnets to me. Um, the second goal is to show you guys a quick, easy, inexpensive snack that everyone loves, which is pizza. All right, so this could be a fun project for home. Um, it could be a fun project for dinner, for lunch, for a snack. It could be interactive with your family. Um, so we're just going to jump right in. Um, first thing, let's talk about the base of the pizza or the bread or the dough. Today we're going to use just some French bread and we're going to use bagels to make your pizzas. Um, nowadays in the grocery store there's a lot of pizza doughs that are ready to eat and available that you can just purchase. Um, you could also use biscuit dough um, and you can also use find a recipe and make like a yeast dough. Um, but I wanted to show you something that you already probably may have at home which is bread, possibly bagels. Um, and if you even had to, if you wanted to, you can even just use some white bread or wheat, or wheat bread as well. That would still work. Second thing that's going to go on after a bread is our sauces. Again, this is items that you probably have at home already. So we're going to keep it simple with some barbecue sauce. Any barbecue sauce will work. Ranch dressing. And we have some marinara sauce. So with the marinara sauce, if you have a can of tomato puree or tomato sauce, you can season that up to make your own pizza sauce. Basically what you will want to do is just add some basic Italian herbs, maybe some garlic, some onion powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper. If you have a tomato puree or a tomato paste, you can thin it out with a little bit of water, a little bit of olive oil to kind of give it uh, more of a viscosity. You want it a little bit loose, but you don't want it runny. But if you're using paste or tomato puree, you don't want it too thick as well. And you season it to how you like it. If you like it on the sweeter side, you can add a pinch of sugar. If you like it on the spicy side, some cayenne pepper or some crushed red pepper flakes. All right, let's talk about toppings. We have some leftover baked chicken. We have some leftover steak, uh, pepperoni. We have some beautiful caramelized onions, which I cooked. I sauteed in a little bit of olive oil. Nice low temperature until they turn brown. Um, you won't, may not believe it, but onions have a lot of sugar in it. And by cooking them low and slow, you can achieve a nice caramelization color. Even if you was to taste this right now, it would be on the, little, on the sweeter side without adding sugar because of the natural sugars. I have some sauteed peppers. These are just bell peppers, so they're not spicy. Again, salt, pepper, a little bit of olive oil, and some sauteed mushrooms. We have three cheeses today. We have mozzarella, cheddar, and provolone. Again, be creative. Use your leftovers at home. If this is perfect for, if you have one or two pieces of chicken, if you have some leftover breakfast sausage, some leftover bacon, uh, the possibilities are endless. Some leftover vegetables. Um, again, the ideal is something quick, easy, that's delicious as well as affordable. All right, so we're gonna jump right in and start making some pizzas. So I'm gonna put some gloves on. So again, another opportunity to have some fun time with the kids. Um, you can set up your toppings like this. You can set up your bre bread. You can have your children, your family come in, make their own pizzas. It's a fun way to enjoy some good time, good quality time with dinner. So we're just gonna do a couple, just so you can kind of get the picture. So on the bagel, I got some barbecue sauce. Um, I don't know, let's do some beef. Even if you have some leftovers from when you go out to eat, if you have a little bit of beef brisket or a little bit of barbecue chicken leftover, perfect for this. A little bit of peppers, let's do some onion. You don't need too many toppings um, for this here guy. Let's make this one vegetarian. 
So we'll do some mushrooms, do some onions, a few peppers, and let's do one more. Let's do a white pizza. All right, so again, we have our French bread. Let's do a little bit of ranch dressing on this one. All right, then maybe some chicken. And again, the good thing about this is you don't need a lot of ingredients to make a nice, healthy snack or a meal. Uh, what else have we used? Let's do some. Let's do some onion on here. And then, okay, I keep saying one more, but this is the last time. One more. We got to do the classic pepperoni. Okay. So we'll do that on a bagel. Some marinara sauce or pizza sauce. We got some pepperoni. All right, now the fun part, cheese. So let's do um, some provolone with the beef. Maybe some provolone and cheddar. Then let's just do some straight classic mozzarella for the pepperoni for the chicken and out or chicken and ranch let's do some provolone and a little bit of mozzarella again you don't have to have these cheeses you can use whatever cheeses you have on hand you can use whatever your favorite cheese is and then let's just do a little cheddar out there but we'll do all three on this one since it doesn't have any meat give it a little extra protein Okay, so now that we have our pizzas ready, we're going to throw these right in the oven. About, about 350 degrees for about maybe five, six minutes, but keep an eye on it. It's not going to take long to cook. All of our ingredients here are already cooked. Um, so we pretty much just want to melt the cheese and heat it up. And we are ready. Here's our classic pepperoni. That glove. So we have our pepperoni on bagel. Then I did earlier a Philly cheesesteak. So we got beef, peppers, onions, mushrooms with cheddar cheese and provolone. Here we have a steak and mushroom with cheddar cheese. And there's our white pizza with ranch dressing, chicken, and caramelized onions. All right, uh, I think I made it without making a mess. Um, I hope you had fun. I hope you try this. Be creative, um, keep it simple, keep it easy, and have fun. Thank you. I chose manual because it's challenging and fun and it can help me with college. I chose manual because I wanted to get a jump start in my career with culinary arts. I chose manual to acquire skills I'd use in real life. I chose manual because I want to be an ER doctor and being an EMT is my first step. Kickstart your future today at Manual Career and Technical Center. Manual is open for all 11th and 12th grade students in both Kansas and Missouri. Learn more today at enrollkc.org slash manual or call 816-418-5200. Kindergarten is great at Kansas City Public Schools. I know this, they have really good teachers. Uh, I know this is a great school. They teach them stuff that I thought my kids would never be able to know at the age of five. Since deciding to send our kiddos to a neighborhood school, we've become a, even more of a part of our community. Now is the time to enroll your future kindergartner for the new school year. Visit enrollkc.org today. To PE with Coach K. I am so happy to be back and up and to stay active and I want you to stay active with me. So today I am going to challenge you, your mom, your dad, your sister, anybody at your house or anybody that you are around at this moment. 
I'm going to challenge you to a cup toss challenge. We're going to have some fun today and it's going to get a little competitive, but I want to see if you can accept this challenge. So if you are watching this, then you have already accepted. So you are going to need two things for today. You are going to need a cup, a plastic cup. We don't want any glass breaking in the house. So get a plastic cup and you can also use a small ball if you have it, one at home. Or you can literally grab a piece of paper or two pieces of paper, ball it up into a small ball and just keep mushing it together so you have your ball. So I have my red cup and make sure whatever cup you have, your ball can fit inside of it. So that's why we want it to be as small as possible. So go grab everything that you need, cup, small ball if you have one at home or a paper ball and come right back to this video so we can get started. So you have accepted this challenge and this is called the cup toss challenge. There are gonna be four different rounds the final round is optional if you wanna challenge yourself a little bit more. So round one, now each round will get a little harder because every round will prepare you for the next. So round one is very simple. We're gonna do a one-handed toss and we're gonna catch it in the cup. But we are going to see how many successful catches can we get in one minute. So go ahead and set a timer for yourself and we're gonna get started. Make sure you keep count. I'm gonna keep count this time so we can see how many successful catches can I get in one minute. And maybe you can compete and go against some of your sisters or your brother or your mom or your dad or as a family, everybody can do it together. So are you ready? Because we're about to get started in five, four, Get your cup and your paper ball ready or whatever ball you have, three, two, and you're going to toss it up and catch. That's one, two. Try to keep your eyes on the ball so you can catch with the cup, three, four. Can you get more than me? Maybe, maybe not. Five, six, seven, Eight, we got 30 more seconds. Nine, maybe you go higher. 10, oh, I'm on a roll. 11, 12, five more seconds. I won't count that. 13, three, two, and one. Okay, so I got 15 in a row. I want you to see how many you were able to get and maybe you won against some of your family members, maybe not. You can also try it again at home on your own time and challenge yourself to get a higher number than you did at this moment. So we are taking it up to round two. You don't have a choice because you already accepted the challenge. Round one prepares you for round two. So for round two, instead of a one-handed toss into the cup, we are going to do a cup toss. So your ball is gonna already be inside of the cup. And you're gonna toss it up and then catch it with the cup. So we don't have this hand. We're only using this hand to toss it up and catch it. So you gotta keep your eyes on the ball so you can know where to place your cup so you can catch it. How many catches can we get in one minute? Go ahead and get ready if you need to shake it off. Shake it off because we're about to get started in 10, nine, ball in the cup, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, let's go. And that's one, and that's two, Ooh, three. Can you go higher? Oh, I won't count that. Put it back in, and if it falls, Brush it off, keep going at six, seven. Remember, nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes. Oh, but I think I'm on a roll today. <laughs> oh, maybe not, spoke too soon. <laughs> Put it back, we got 30 more seconds left. Oop. I kind of lost count, but I hope you're keeping up. Let me just 
And if you need to adjust your ball, do so, but we only got 15. Keep going, keep your eyes on the ball. You accepted this challenge, so you can't give up. Now, 10 seconds. Oop. Five, four, three, oh, two, and one more. Maybe not, one. All right, so I lost count with my points, but I hope you were keeping up with yours. So now it's time for round three. Remember, each round will prepare you for the next. So round one, we tossed it up, we catched, and if you need to go back to round one, if round two was a little complicated and you kinda wanna practice round one, you can always go back to round one and time yourself as well. If you need to go back to round two, if round three is a little complicated and you wanna kinda take your time to get to that level, you can also do that. Everybody is different, you work at your own pace. But have fun doing it and challenge yourself to do better every time. So round three. We are going to need a wall. So we have a ball and a cup, and we also need a wall. So I am gonna take you to a wall. We did one-handed toss, catching the cup. We did one-handed with the cup and the ball. Now we are going to toss to the wall and catch in the cup. So find any open wall space. It doesn't have to be huge. It can be small. You're gonna do a light toss and catch it in the cup. So we have one minute to see how many can we get. Now remember, if this is too complicated and you wanna take your time, go back to round two and you can still start at the same time that we do for round three. But are you ready? You don't have a choice. So get ready, starting in five, four, get ready to toss towards the wall, three, two, and go. One, two, three, maybe you step back a little further, four, maybe you throw a little higher, five, challenge yourself, keep your eyes on the ball, six, Ooh. maybe not. Seven, how many points can you get? Can you beat my score? Ooh, talking too quick. <laughs> All right, we got 30 seconds left. I think I lost count, I think this is 10. Oh, <laughs> 11, <laughs> 12. All right, 15 seconds. <laughs> 13, 14, we got five, four, three, two, and top. time. <laughs> All right, so round three, I had you know a little trouble, but it's okay. Remember, you can always go back if you need to review one of the rounds, you can always pause, press play, and work at your own time and your own pace. So, for our last and final round, remember, we did the one-handed toss into the cup, we did the cup toss, we did the wall toss. Now we are going to go under the leg and try to catch it in the cup. Ooh, that was nice. <laughs> So you're gonna see, and we're gonna do this for 30 seconds. And if you want, you can kind of time yourself. Maybe you wanna go a minute, but we're gonna do 30 seconds since this is the last and final round and we're gonna see if we can accept this last challenge of an under the leg cup catch with our ball. So we have five. Now I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate and I'm gonna go slow since this is the last challenge. And if you accept this challenge, then you deserve this slow demonstration. <laughs> so the way that I do it, everybody is different. You do what you feel is most comfortable and successful for you. So I try to keep the ball close to me when I toss it up. 
so it doesn't go too far and I don't have to move too far or move off balance since my leg is going to be up. So I'm in one spot. As soon as my leg goes up, I keep the ball close. I flick my hand right here and that way I can easily see the ball so I can catch it. Now, if you wanna be fancy and you wanna to toss the ball higher and maybe toss it to another angle and then move towards it, you choose to do that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep it really close and try to get as many as I can in 30 seconds and I want you to try to do the same. So we are going to start. Are you ready? You don't have a choice because we're starting in five, four, three, two, one. 30 seconds this time, that's one. That's two, three, Whoop. four, I'm on a roll. Yeah, talk too soon. <laughs> Five, maybe not. Five, okay. Six, seven, all right, we only got 15 seconds. Whoop. Keep going, eight. Maybe not. Nine, maybe I need to slow down. 10, there we go. Five seconds. Three, two, and one. Okay, I think I got 12 or 11. So, we have finished from round one to round four. Remember, just as a review, if you wanna do this on your own time, you know, you can always rewind back. But round one, one-handed toss, catch it in the cup. How many can you get in one minute? Round two, cup toss. Catch it in the cup while tossing with the cup. How many can you get in a round? No, not how many can you get in round. How many can you get in one minute? Round three, we did the wall toss. Toss it towards the wall, catch it in the cup. And round four, last and final round, we did under the leg and catch it in the cup. So, I hope you had a wonderful time. I hope you laughed, even if your ball fell or not, if you couldn't get it, or if you didn't get any points. As long as you accepted this challenge, that's all that matters. You got up, you got active, and that's what I love to encourage you to do. So, use this time, or whatever time that you have, watch this video, gather all of your family around, have fun, challenge yourself, and make it a little competition. So I hope that you enjoyed this and I will see you next week for our next segment. The desire to create lives within each of us. From Grammy winning producers and musicians to NBA stars, to Navy admirals and Medal of Honor recipients, to internationally renowned artists and beloved local muralists, Paseo graduates have been creating their own success, their own history, their own legacy since 1920s. at East High School. In art, we talk a lot about observation. Observation is when we look at an object. And when you're looking at the object, you're not just glancing at it and looking away, but you are observing it. 
and looking at every little detail of that object. So today, we're going to be doing some observation drawings. You're going to need a few materials for this project, but there are materials that you already have at home. First, on the list of materials, you need something to draw on. I have a lovely sketchbook with some nice white paper. You can use printer paper or you can use lined paper. You can use a sticky note. You can use any type of paper that you can find. Maybe it's the back of an advertisement that you got in the mail. You could even use a ripped up cardboard box for your paper. Anything that you can draw on. You will also need something to draw with. I like to use a marker for this project. You can also use a pencil. You could use crayons or even paint. You could ask your mom or sister to borrow some of their lipstick. You could sneak into the fridge and grab a bottle of ketchup. Anything that you can use to make a mark. The last thing you need for this project is an object. Now, your object needs to have form. That means that it needs to be three-dimensional with length, width, and height. I have my super cool East Bears mask, but it's a little flat, doesn't have much form, so I'm not going to use that today. I would recommend a stuffed animal. They have lots of good texture on them and they can really get you guys moving with your drawing. Or, as you'll see today, I have a really cool mug. You also have objects on you at all times. And I'm not talking about your cell phones. Your hand is an object. Your face is an object. Your body has form and can be used as an object for your artwork. So, today, get your drawing pad or your drawing materials, the thing to draw on, the thing to draw with, and your object, and let's get started. We're going to be talking about contours. Contour is just a fancy word for outline. Now, when we're outlining something, we're not just going to do the overarching outline around the object, but we're gonna find all of the little outlines inside of the object too. Remember, we're observing. So when you're looking at your object, you're finding contours to show the form of your object those shadows, those highlights, anything that you can find on your object to make it look three-dimensional, even though you're only using line. Go ahead, get your writing utensil, turn to a clean piece of paper, and we're going to get started with our contours. Today, you have a few options. Middle school students from 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, you all will get to use your hand. So as you're drawing today, you're going to be looking at your hand. You can look at it straight out like this, but that's not very interesting doesn't show form. I would recommend doing some kind of cool hand gesture. Love. Or even you could spell out your name, let's see, with sign language. I think I got that right. 
I would look it up to make sure you get it right. I'm going to set my paper on a surface that is sturdy because I only have one hand to draw with and I can't hold it down with my other hand because this is my object. I'm going to set my hand up and I'm going to put my marker or my drawing utensil on the paper. After I set my utensil on the paper, I'm not going to pick it back up. It's going to stay there the entire time. We're going to do one continuous line. That means continuously moving our utensil, no lifting as we're drawing our hand. Now I'm going to look at my hand. Let's do I like peace signs. Let's do a peace sign. So as I'm drawing my hand, I'm going to challenge myself to only look at my hand. I'm going to start at my finger and I'm going to notice the curvatures as my finger is bending. I'm going to even notice the little teeny tiny hairs that I have on my fingers. And the little cracks that I have in my knuckles. I'm going to notice all these lines and if you notice, as I'm drawing my hand, I'm not lifting up my marker. I'm keeping my marker down and if I forget something, like the bottom of this finger, I'm just gonna find my way back to it. There are so many lines in your hands that it's really easy to just make a bunch of expressive lines and continue with your drawing. Now as I'm moving, my hand's getting a little tired. And I'm talking about my hand that's holding up the peace sign. And that's okay. If it moves a little bit, that's fine. You just don't want to change it up drastically as you're trying to draw it. Noticing my shadows, the knuckles, how the top of my hand is so much tanner than the inside of my hand. I'm also noticing the little marks from markers that I have on my fingers because as an artist, your hands are always a little bit dirty. That's why we love COVID because we're just washing our hands all the time. You should do that aside from COVID too. All right, now I'm at that part of my hand where it's just skin. But remember, we're observing. So I can see in my skin that it's got some cracks in it. It's a little dry. There's also some freckles, and I actually have a bruise on my hand too, so that's great. And then we're moving up to the actual peace sign. Now I want you to notice that even though it's just one hand, I'm taking so much careful time with this hand. That's because we're observing. We have to make sure that we see every little detail and that we get every little detail in these marks. I can feel that I hit the edge of my paper, but I'm just gonna let it, I'm just gonna let it ride. All right, 
Are we ready to look at the drawing? Oh my God, my hands are giant. Wow. Also, my marker's running out a little bit, but that's okay. It adds another layer to this drawing. Very interesting, right? When you're not looking at your paper, sometimes your arm wanders. The most important part is that we are observing and focusing on the object rather than what we're drawing. That's the challenge. So as I'm looking at my hand, it's kind of hard to see some of it, but if I'm observing this work of art, I can see my little finger, I can see my thumb, I can see one of my fingers sticking up, and this is the last one where it went off the page. So make sure that you focus on the observation rather than the perfection of your artwork. That's a challenge, and that's why we practice this. You wanna have a little more fun with it. Of course, you can always pick up some markers, or I even have some art sticks, and you can color. You can find all of those hidden spaces within your drawing and you can add color in them. Now as you're adding color, make sure that you're not focusing on the shapes that are in your object or your hand. Make sure that you're focusing on the shapes that are in your artwork. Don't try to make it look more like a hand. Don't erase, just have fun. Do something a little bit different and a little bit outside of your comfort zone. As you're coloring, make sure that you move around the page. Don't just keep your one color in one section. Make sure you work the whole artwork at the same time. And you can color as many spaces as you want or you can leave spaces open you can even put cool designs in the spaces if you want very cool all right that's for my sixth seventh and eighth graders if you want a more difficult challenge, I would recommend holding something in that hand. That's gonna create more form, more depth in your image. Adding some different curves, adding some different shadows, adding different grips. Make sure you change it up a little bit and have fun. Thanks, this was Fine Arts Friday with KCPS. The desire to create lives within each of us. From Grammy-winning producers and musicians, to NBA stars, to Navy admirals and Medal of Honor recipients, to internationally renowned artists and beloved local muralists, Paseo graduates have been creating their own success, their own history, their own legacy since 1920s. I love Southeast because of the culture, the bank program, and restorative justice. I love Southeast because of the academic, sports, and students. I love Southeast because of the people, the energy, and the advanced classes. It's not a like. I love Southeast because the students here at Southeast are full of potential and they believe in achieving anything. 
We are, we are Southeast. Southeast. We stand shoulder to shoulder. Join the Southeast family. Enroll today. So thank you guys for being here so far, and thank you for listening and paying such close attention. The last tune we played was Carmen, which is a cumbia from Colombia, and you heard the bongos, as you see a lot. I know a lot of people at, uh, at uh, Paseo, they're very, very interested in percussion. We have uh, lots of good drummers there. So Andres, what instrument do you have here? This is the bongo. Now, when I come up to the bongos and I teach the bongos a lot, a lot of people just come and they start slapping away at them. But I've learned over the years that the bongos have a very, very particular technique to them. What is that technique called? Well, you use a lot of your, the, the first half of your fingers is mainly what you use. Here, because we're playing a soul, very quiet uh, areas, we want to use the tips of the fingers. You are really, really careful because you can really damage your fingers and get some irreversible, irreversible damage. So always hit with this part, never hit with the joint. Never hit the edge with the joint because you will really hurt yourself. Okay, and I, and I think the word you told me when, when, when you taught me, this is my teacher here. So you guys, that uh, you know are, are looking at me as your teacher. This is one of my teachers here. So when it came to percussion, this is a guy that I have learned a lot from. What is it? There, there's a special word when when it comes to the bongos. It's called martillo, right? Martillo. Yeah. The the, the basic rhythm for, for for bongo is martillo, and you you know that basic rhythm. It, it sounds like a martillo. That's what it's called. Martillo is. That's it. One, two, three, four. You play fast, you play salsa. You play slow, you play bolero. So it, if you master, if you master that pattern, then it, you you really have a, a good technique of the bongos down. I, I have found, and it's a lot more than just slapping the bongos. So you're actually digging your thumb in and hitting the head while your thumb is digging into it. So there's several different sounds a bongo can make, right? Yeah, you get that popping sound. When you hit, when you, when you slide your finger into it, open, close. Also on the, on the, on the bigger drum, you can open tones and, and mute tones. Very good. So, uh, there is all kinds of sounds. You, just, you look at two drums and you think, ah, oh, well, there's two sounds there. There's so many things that you can get out of a bongo. Yeah, it's a very versatile. And it, that's one thing I've, I've come to learn with the bongos. It's much more than just two drums. There's a lot of different sounds that the bongos can make. So we're about to play a tune that we're going to feature on the race on here in a minute. It's called Oye Como Va. And it was actually, uh, it was uh, originally a cha-cha, if I remember, by Tito Puente. Yeah, uh, it, was, it was originally a cha-cha by Tito Puente, but then it was made very popular by a, a rock group called Santana, which may sound more familiar to you guys. And so this is Oye Como Va, one of the more popular Latin American tunes of all time. So let's play that for you right now. Yep. We're gonna feature Andres on the bongos here. <laughs>
So most of the songs you have heard today have been in Spanish. Now our group have members that grew up speaking Spanish, like Andres. Andres grew up in Guadalajara, Mexico, and he grew up speaking Spanish and then learned English as he came to America. And then we have some members that have spoke both English and Spanish growing up, like Joe and Uciel and Luis. They both have Spake, spake both uh, Spanish and English growing up. So you have people like me and Kevin who spoke no Spanish growing up. And so this has been kind of a learning experience for us. And I think you could uh, be honest when we say, you know, music is where we learn most of our Spanish. And, and the Spanish that we can speak now is from the music that we have learned. Uh, and I, I have found that there is one tune when we go around town and we play, there's one tune that even English speaking people that don't speak a whole lot of Spanish know, and that's La Bamba, right guys? Oh, yeah. Anytime we play La Bamba, even people that primarily speak English know that. So my challenge to you guys is to listen to this song and maybe listen back when we are done and start your Spanish learning as well too. So how about we hit La Bamba with them one time, guys? Is that good? All right, yeah. this is... La Bamba, uh, it was originally a Mexican folk song, and then uh, later on, a guy named Richie Valens, who is a very popular guy in the scene of rock and roll of America, made this tune very, very popular to Americans in what we call Chicano rock, right? And, and so basically, Richie Valens was a pioneer of what we now call Chicano rock, and so this is a great example of that. So hopefully you guys will sing along with us at home. This is... La Bamba.
Thank <laughs> you.